Doll faces, today is the day that I'm gonna be giving you a little bit of a tour of my altar. I am not planning to go into absolutely every single thing in massive detail and talk about the origins of every single thing I have on my altar. I am gonna go into detail about certain bits and pieces, haven't decided what yet, we'll see how the video unfolds. But if there are any questions that you do have, leave them below. And at the end, when I look through the comments, I will kind of get a feel for any areas that I might have missed that people might really want me to talk about that I can kind of go on and get into in a different video. Obviously, I do also reserve the expressed right to say, um, don't wanna tell you that to any question that is asked of me obviously this is a sacred place this is a really kind of important aspect of any witch's life um, the altar space is dear to a witch's heart so what I show you I show you with all love and all authenticity and what I don't want to show you or I don't want to talk about shouldn't be taken personally it's just one of those things where you kind of you know where your own line is and you know when you're in danger of overstepping it and talking about things that you don't necessarily want to make public or you don't want to share with others so I just kind of go with my gut on that front. But first of all, there is no obligation whatsoever to have an altar. There are tons and tons of witches that work without altars that feel no desire to have an altar or in fact just cannot for certain reasons, um, either to do with keeping their practice under wraps or because of space, things like that. I'm just showing you around my altar and showing you how I do things and that's basically it. I'm not saying that this is a format for anybody else to follow. I'm not saying it's necessary or not necessary to have an altar or to have, you know, a physical sacred space in the home. I totally recognise that tons of witches don't have that for all kinds of different reasons and I think that's absolutely fine. In my last place where I lived I had a small altar table that was very very modest and I used that for, for some years. Uh, my boyfriend has now inherited that for his sacred space that he has developed in our new place and I have upgraded to this badass motherfucker. So let's get started. Okay I've taken the tripod off, we're now going rogue. I want to start with talking about what's up here on my windowsill. That is indeed a piggy bank, an old school save your money piggy bank, save your pennies. Um, we do actually use this piggy bank, we call him Pigwa and we put spare change in him and pound coins, two pound coins, sometimes fivers if we're feeling really flush. Um, but to me he's more of a representation of abundance and of diligently saving money and just being clever with money, being wise with money um, and so I like to keep him above the altar, I think that just gives it a really really sexy energy of abundance. I feel like Pigwa and the altar space kind of vibe off of each other pretty well. And then you will see a gold glittery box up there and that contains some of the key crystals that I use for my altar, for my magic and also for my client readings. And on top of that you will see a round stone slab. Um, that's where I kind of, I shuffle my tarot cards on that so I don't shuffle them directly on the cloth. Um, and then just an incense holder on the top which is also for client readings. I like to leave that stuff as close to the altar as possible without it actually being on the altar space. Because um, client readings are important and you know I just like to have that stuff there so that I know that I'm um, I'm kind of using it, I'm using it to, to connect with the fact that I'm a spiritual counsellor, it's what I do for a living and I want to help my clients and that is something that I bring to every morning meditation that I do, it's something that I think about every day. Okay, you will notice that my altar is in an alcove in the bedroom um, and there are things either side of the alcove. So I'm gonna start with taking you through what's uh, on either side first of all. Down on the left hand side you will see some um, couple of boxes of long matches and they are to light kind of inside glass devotional candles and also to light a large amount of candles at the same time. So they're really long you know, they're, they're kind of like a wand type of length um, and so they're, they're obviously really really useful for witches and wizards all over the place. I have black tea lights down there and that's to light my devotional candle for my matron. Whenever one runs down I put another one in. And you'll also see the standard big bag of white tea lights. I also keep a couple of lighters down there. Moving on to the other side, this is where I keep the paper. Okay, so you'll see a few things secreted down here on the right hand side. I've got my Leone Dawson workbook from last year. I normally do keep my Leone Dawson workbook for the present year down the side as well. Um, but it's the 3rd of March today and on the 1st of every month I do my business review. So actually the recent, the most recent Leone Dawson book is actually in the living room right now. Um, this is my spell book and this is my 
pen that I should have put back in my little bag here. I'll just see if I can pop it back in one-handed. Um, this is a bag that was bought for me by a client of mine. Um, it is the strength card from the Bohemian Gothic Tarot and I keep it down the side of my altar and it just contains the pens that I like to use for spell crafting and journaling and things like that. Um, some scissors for my collage work and my art magic so it's just basically where I keep supplies I guess you could say. It's got some print stick in there as well and stuff like that because I make a lot of art in the circle. Yeah so this is my spell book. This is my diary, my country wisdom and folklore diary that I use. I've got my adult colouring book down here as well because um, I kind of do use my altar as just somewhat of a, a little chill out spot, an activation station if you will, somewhere to get my inspiration going, somewhere to think about things and get ideas and I like to do adult colouring while I'm doing that. This is my current book of mirrors, this is the most important book down the side here and by far the most used as well. I'm constantly scribbling in that, constantly writing things down. This is a book where I write down my meditations, when I did them, how they went, that kind of thing. I also do sometimes write about the results of scrying in there as well. At the back you will see my art books. I have my book of chaos, I have um, my goddess book that I'm doing and I have a couple of found books or kind of reclaimed books, I guess you could say old books that I um, create visual images in and that's all really centered around spirituality you know it's all centered around ideas that I have about magic and esoteric stuff. Okay since we're already over this side of the altar um, if it's not already evident to you from looking at this side of the altar this is very much the side where I connect to my matron deity um, and where I do work involving her um, this is an image of her. People have asked me a few times where this one came from and I've got to be honest, I have tried and tried and tried in vain to find out who the fuck is actually responsible for creating this particular image of her, which I completely adore. And to be honest with you, I had it in my collection of images for such a long time before I decided to use it on my altar because I felt really bad about using an image of a goddess when I wouldn't be able to credit the artist and I wouldn't be able to praise the artist for his or her work. However, I just have not been able to find out who drew this. Um, it is on a Google image search for images of the goddess Hell, um, but it's just a it's just a particularly special image of her, which you know I'm sure you'll agree it really is. Um, she's got skulls in her hair down there, you know, like skeletons, kind of bones and things in her hair. I've definitely tripped off of that before. Just the perspective that occurs, you know, with the it's it's complicated it's almost like she sliced down one side and you can see the skull long ways but then it's also not it also looks like it's just the front of the skull do you understand what i mean so there's a perspective shift there and that is really cool and does amazing things to me when i'm already in the ritual mindset you know when i'm already in that state of deep contemplation this is hell's black candle i light this for every devotional i also light a black tea light in this every single time I do a devotional to her. Pretty badass, I'm sure you'll agree. This is my favourite piece of amethyst that I own. This is the piece of amethyst, guys, that I went on and on about that I said I used to scry with when I was a small child and it used to barely fit in my hand then, so I must have been really, really young. These are the prayer beads I used to make my addresses to hell and to do devotionals to hell. These were made by Joey from Starry Eyed Supplies and they're absolutely beautiful. This bowl and dish was given to me by um, a very important woman that was in my life for a long time. Um, and at the time when she gave this to me, she was aware that she was dying of terminal cancer. Um, and I just felt a very, very strong pull to keep my um, prayer beads for my matron, who is a goddess of death, in this bowl. Um, yeah, and I just... Uh, there, there's a lot more I could say about that, but let's move on. My sugar skull death's head. I've had this for a very long time. I feel like it does connect me somewhat to my Mexican ancestry. I don't go over the top with that, and it's not something that I massively, overtly, extremely feel that I connect to. Um, I feel I connect much more to the fact that I have a lot of Mexican blood when I look at myself in the mirror, rather than in relation to what I do at my altar. Um, although folk Catholicism is very interesting to me, the way that Mexicans have taken and interpreted and kind of evolved their Catholic state, if you will, is really interesting to me, because on my 
father's side there's a massive Irish Catholic influence so that's kind of more interesting to me in a way um, but I do love this and I've, I've always kept this on every altar that I've had it's very important to me for reasons I won't go into um, so yeah that, that's just really the one thing you'll ever see that is uh, overtly Mexican that you can clearly see is a Mexican influence. Okay so there's some bits and pieces here I do really like to change up what is um, here in front of my image of my matron deity but at the moment this is what it looks like various things these were sent to me by a gorgeous woman who's an artist who also sent me some really cool easings and these were sent to me by her as well this is hell's rune um, stones that are sacred to her some images that um, are important for reasons i won't go into in here i keep my protective eye which i use to cleanse and consecrate my altar and cleanse and consecrate working tools i also have some prayer beads in here which are really really cool which i'll just show you the stones are carnelian and jet and there is a chaos star how amazing is that these are one of my favorite sets of prayer beads alongside my um, prayer beads that I use for health devotionals um, so yeah love 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 these these were made for me by somebody who won one of my um, giveaways for a reading and this was a thank you gift that she made for me and it was beyond every expectation I could have imagined it's beautiful this is my cauldron this gets a lot of action these days I do a lot of release work and a lot of fire magic in there I do also burn loose incense in there and a number of other things besides um, this stand that you see underneath it I just grabbed at a charity shop and it was like 50p but it's really lovely and it looks really ornate and really cool so really happy with that in front you will see a bottle of storm water this is actually from a couple of years ago when we had some incredible incredible summer storms I do use it as a carrier oil um, when I burn incense blends and stuff like that I do also dab it onto me I dab it onto my pulse points I use it in magic I use it in cauldron work I pour it in the bath um, you know when I have ritual baths and stuff like that or when I have baths because of my bad back I pour some in the bath this gets a lot of action storm water is a big thing it's a big deal for me this is the Crone Goddess Incense Oil from Starry Eyed Supplies, Joey Morris's shop. There are some little flecks of amethyst in there at the bottom as well. Um, I'm nearly out, Joey. I need seriously to come and stock up. Um, this is also another one that I use as carrier oil. I dab it on my pulse points. I dab it on my pulse points a lot before I do a devotional to hell or before I address hell or do any work with her whatsoever. I really, really love this... Um, this oil and I'm definitely planning on purchasing more different oils from Joey. Another one of my favourite pieces of amethyst, this is a spell that I'm working on at this very moment in time. This is a piece of paper that was actually a spell that I did in June of 2013 and I keep this piece of paper on the altar because I was recently going back over some of my old witchy bits and pieces and I found this um, piece of paper which was kind of the central spoke of the spell that I did and it amazed me how much everything had come to pass everything had come true you know so this is really the physical evidence of how powerful my spellcraft was in that instance and it put chills up and down my spine and I just absolutely loved it so I've kept that on the altar and I keep consistently looking at it and kind of taking that power from it you know this is Joan of Arc in the back there these are some of the key candles I'm working with at the moment. This is my working candle. Um, you can see there the remnants of Burkana and also of Yera. I've been big on burning oil incense lately, guys, so that's why this puppy is out. To the trained eye, really, to anyone who's past 101 in witching, I think you can clearly see that there's some healing magic going on here, what with the rose quartz and the lavender heads and the selenite. <laughs> um, yeah, and the pink poppet. So yeah, there's, there's something a little healing happening here, guys. This is an expression for me of the divine feminine, this side. Um, and this is something that I just keep building on and changing and messing around with. So I'll just talk you through a few key things. First of all, you will note that there is an element of both punk and pop iconography here. Um, so you've got Sue Catwoman, you've got Susie Sue, um, and down here you have got Patti Smith. There is also Debbie Harry. And then here, this is actually a piece of my own art um, of Amy Winehouse, which I made oh a good a good three years i think before she died what else is important um i have a really close connection to the virgin mary there'll always kind of be some sort of image of the virgin mary on any altar that i have this is rose water i work a lot with rose water i connect it 
overtly to the divine feminine and to the goddess as an archetype. This is my cute little crystal ball that I've been practicing with to try and decide whether or not I want to get a bigger one. And I really think I do, you know. I, I, I mean, this is really working out for me. Um, so no doubt I will soon purchase a bigger one. Um, this stand that just coincidentally this crystal fit perfectly into but this stand my mum bought for me and she said she thought it'd be perfect for the altar and I love it because it's just really creepy it's creepy as fuck which I love so yeah I put that on straight away these arms are the arms of a doll called Bernadette who is a mother superior she was a nun doll and she was very large and I had her for a long time um, I, I definitely had an animist or I, I still do have an animistic connection to her but she's now in pieces um, and yeah, I, I love to keep her arms around. This doll has a really seriously sumptuous energy, guys. This is the newest thing, but by far the most important thing on this altar top right now. To me, there is just something so divine about this. This is a gift from Victoria Mosley, a wonderful, wonderful friend of mine who created the Vintage Wisdom Oracle deck and who I really do consider to be a kindred, you know, a real soul sister. And this is a pine cone that comes from the pine that was planted by Rose Lamartine Yates. She was a suffragette and this was planted in the grounds of the house where suffragettes used to go to recover and recuperate after they had spells in prison. The suffragettes were encouraged to plant trees in the grounds of the house while they were going through their healing process and while they were coming to terms with what had happened to them. Honestly, when I opened the package and I actually had this in my hands, the energy from it was so fucking overwhelming that I just got very teary. It was um, a really magical moment. The tree was planted in 1909, so it's been around for a very long time now, and this is a very important gift for me. And to be able to place it in the divine feminine section of my altar, although I think you'll agree, this is a pretty fucking divine feminine altar all over. <laughs> And I make no apology for that. Um, but yeah, to be able to place this here is a, is a massive, massive privilege. And I just, honestly, I thought I couldn't love Victoria anymore, but I definitely do now. This is my boyfriend's familiar. <laughs> Hello, Vella. Hello, gorgeous. Hello. <laughs> Isn't she gorgeous? She's so magical. So, so magical. We will now proceed to go through my witchy drawers. Okay, this is a massive collection of stick incense. Um, I've spoken about stick incense before in other videos. It is definitely my bag, and there's just a huge collection of it here, the key ones that I use. Um, I've also got some cone incense here and here, some nag and some earth angel by Stanford. Nag is what I principally do burn for my devotionals to my matron deity. Um, she's keen on it, I'm keen on it. It makes, it makes me feel really reverent. It just seems to make sense, so that's what I use. Remember earlier when I told you about Bernadette's arms? This is Bernadette's head. <laughs> this is very important. Um, and there's a real magical, mystical quality to this too. You know, so I dismembered the fuck out of her, but she was totally cool with it. We agreed upon it beforehand and it's all fine. If anything, I would say that she actually is um, eerily more alive, dismembered than she was when she was whole. <laughs> Okay, so what have I got? Matches, charcoal discs, of course, all the witchy essentials, more rose water. Um, I've got some cone incense for my um, tea with the goddess days that I do. Um, I keep a lot of rose incense and a lot of lavender incense. These are some of the key oils that I use. These are not all of the oil incenses that I use, but these are some of the main ones. This is Blade Over Shield Oil. It's a carrier oil by Joey Morris. I've only used this once so far. It was intensely powerful and I have plans for it this summer. Some of the main things that I burn are black pepper, um, lavender and rose. Again, rose has a massive goddess connection for me. I like to burn tea tree and I like to burn eucalyptus oil as well. I keep spoons in my altar drawers because I like to scoop spell remnants out of my cauldron rather than use my fingers. Um, and I then place them into a jar, rather like this one here, which does have some spell remnants in it from some fire magic that I did just a couple of days ago. And then I like to dispose of my spell remnants in a special way. They don't just go in the bin. Like, you know, you would put, for example, um, dust from incense cones in the bin or that kind of thing. Like, I, I don't do that with spell remnants. And I think a great many witches would agree that it's not the thing that you do with spell remnants. So that's why I have spoons in there. Um, this is some moon water, which has been charged in the light of two moons and one super moon. So it's super, super potent. 
pink candles I'm stocking up for some healing magic that I'm going to be doing um, during my next tea with the goddess day which is coming up these are lavender heads for some healing magic that I have been doing that you have already uh, seen I have two sets of runes in this top drawer these runes are for magic and mojo bags and that kind of thing and these runes in this box these are for my communions with my matron deity we mostly communicate using the runic language and so these runes are for my communions with her they tend to happen on the new moon by the way or the dark moon although lately hell has really really been telling me that i need to do more stuff on the half moon um, she's kind of getting really into that now and she's badgering me for that so that's kind of a, an interesting thing that's taken place this is just an incense holder burner thing I'm sure a lot of you can recognize that just from seeing it these are some things from starry-eyed supplies that I've been using of late this is the exercise that negativity blend this one is called crone reborn which is very strong and this is eggshell protection which I purchased to make some mojo bags for a couple of friends I've got a stack of paper under here for magic spells um, on top just a couple of cloths in here are some black candles, um, long black dinner candles for my matron deity. I just like to make sure I've always got a few on hand so that whenever one does burn down, um, I've got another one there to kind of put in and set up. This is another oil, by the way. This one is jasmine and patchouli, another carrier oil. They're two scents that are important to me. More pink candles for taking tea with the goddess and a couple of my favorite candle holders underneath. They are vintage candle holders. I love them to pieces and they are sometimes present on my altar, but just not at the moment. So they're under here. Okay, so in this second drawer, I have my um, more official book of shadows in here that I have specific certain ceremonial purposes for, but really doesn't get used very often. And then I have my old book of mirrors, the one before the one that I have now, because I still reference it quite heavily. I will link below in the uh, down bar to the video that I did where I just talk through my book of mirrors for a while and explain what it is used for, etc. if that's something that is interesting to you. And I was referencing that one in that video. These are bags to make mojo bags, to make, you know, spell bags and that kind of thing. Just a really typical thing for witches to have around, isn't it? Little bags for that kind of purpose. In here, this actually did contain a chakra stone set, but actually at the moment I keep quite a few of my most important working rosaries in there because it's just a really good way to store them and keep them safe. I'm a rosary freak. In this corner that was just out of shot, I have kept um, some of the cards from Floodgate 2015 that did not get destroyed that I thought I could try and use for magic at some point or another. I wanna say that this is yarn, but I feel like that's not right. I don't know, I'm not a knitter, but like yarn or thread or wool or whatever you wanna call it. Um, I keep quite a bit of that for um, certain kinds of magic that I do. I also use it to make these kinds of poppets, which I know a few of you want a tutorial on, which I will try and get to. You'll see some material here and that is also for making poppets. Just a couple more rosaries down here that I use. These are just plates and dishes and um, you know things that I might use to set up temporary altars or sometimes to have on the altar depending and these artificial roses are normally used in the setup of a temporary altar that I use for my taking tea with the goddess sessions. I just love a lot of roses and pink and stuff like that so rather than buy um, flowers every time because I know it's bad for the environment to buy flowers all the time I just will use these little rose heads. There we go, better to see them now in that light. This is my little statuette of Bast. These are some cut up words for word magic. I do a lot of word magic, a lot of cut ups magic, that kind of thing. This is a, a box that I use for magic, which is super powerful. I've done a few really successful spells using that particular box. Not that I'm crediting the box, you know, with any real degree of importance, but it is just one that I use over and over again. And a witch does get used to certain tools and you do invest energetically in certain tools. So that will be the one that I use for box magic most of the time. Got my little bell down here in the front I'm actually waiting on a couple of large bells with a really good sound um, from my boyfriend's mum who's keeping them to one side for me this is another box that I use for magic now I really like boxes with slots in the top like money boxes with slots in the top for a particular kind of box magic that I really love to use there's something about the slot in the top of a box uh, that makes it feel somewhat like a post box you know what I mean and it feels like you're posting your intention you're posting your instructions out there into the cosmos and then I kind of feel like the 
um, the intention marinades in there and you just leave it in there and it does its thing and the energy just keeps kind of punctuating and punctuating itself and almost underlining itself over and over again. And funnily enough, this box is the box that I used um, for that spell where I showed you the piece of paper up on the top of my altar where I said, you know, I look back on it and it really worked and it was just incredible to see how accurately it worked and how powerful and potent it was. I used this exact box for that magical working. For me, um, a money box with a slot in the top is just a very powerful thing. I've always loved them. I love them since I was young. I love those ones with the little keys on the front. And I think the key itself is actually quite powerful too. Okay, so these are some of my little poppets that I've made over time. This is a protection poppet that I'll sometimes just put in my pocket. All of these poppets have different purposes. These are four of the most important ones that I have uh, ever made and used in workings and I do continue to use them in workings because they all have their little specific intentions. This is just a really cool tin that I found that I keep other crystals in. I have a Russian doll there. Her little babies are up on the altar at the moment. Some pine cones and some crow feathers. My little nunzilla doll and my palmistry hand. Just some decorations and some candle holders and that kind of thing that I like to use on and off. Now these two dolls are really special. They're both antiques and they're both very old. This is a Mary Queen of Scots doll. She's super old. She's from the 1930s. She's an old lady and she's got a shredded up cape. But to me she has a very magical quality and she is very much alive and I can seriously seriously trip out on her there's just something about her that is too cool to me and this is an amazing antique nun doll again that I feel is just very much still with us and has just an epic energy she has creeped some people out I must admit some people have seen her and said oh no she's not for me um, but that's okay she's for me now although she does look very very grubby a lot of this is actually just sun damage where she's been left in the sun by the previous owner. Uh, like this up here, all of this is sun damage. This is not dust, guys. This is just from her being very old. Down here, I just have some images of certain things that I often like to kind of place on my altar. It's Bridget Bardot. I've got a real thing for film stars, guys. Um, Audrey, the one and only. Yeah, I've got a real thing for film stars, so there's a lot of film stars hanging around um, and images of the Virgin, as always, of course. Oh, I've got more crow feathers and raven's feathers down here as well. Lots of feathers, guys, lots of feathers. It's my sincere hope that you found this interesting and maybe it gave you some inspiration for things you might want to um, keep stored underneath your altar. Maybe you struggle to work out what you want to actually present on the altar and what needs to go away. I know that I had certain phases of my witchy life when I was young Younger, where I wanted to keep everything out on the altar you know I wanted it to look somewhat like an apothecary of sorts um, so I just wanted everything out on the altar all of my oils all of my bottles everything so back in the day I would have had like my spell remnant jar and my moon water and everything would have just been out and I would have wanted it to look like a really old cool mystical chemist kind of <laughs> kind of thing but actually that just attracts a lot of dust and it makes things very cluttered and it made me really confused about what I was using my spaces for um, and that kind of thing. So I've started to really appreciate the value of storage space and of, um, of kind of revisiting the storage space time after time and thinking, okay, what do I need? What's relevant? What needs to come to the front? What's seasonal? What needs to be closer to the front because I'm about to use it and what can stay at the back and that kind of thing. I like having a bigger altar because for me, I really felt like I did not want to have a set place to do my devotionals to hell um, or to you know journey with her or any of those things or commune with her on the dark moon I wanted to keep everything together and have it holistic but to have a dedicated area for her so that it felt more like she was a presence that was involved in the rest of my magical life so for me it's been a massive blessing to have this larger altar which we found at a kind of vintage slash secondhand furniture store the first week that we came here and I completely fell in love with it and um, we bought it and like it's so heavy and we were like carrying the drawers and the body of it up the road and it was just like it was a hell of a journey <laughs> but uh, I got it for my birthday and it was absolutely worth all of that effort and it was it's just magic to actually get it 
um, here in the alcove obviously we measured up for it before to make sure that it was like gonna be right for this alcove where I knew that I wanted my altar to be um, but you know it's just been amazing it's been amazing to be able to upgrade like this and it really means a lot to me now at the age of 31 to be able to have a space that really reflects the amount of attention and energy that I want to give to my spiritual life however I know that laying importance on a space in the physical to do witchy work is not a prerequisite it's in no way what a lot of other witches want to do or think about doing and I think that's absolutely fine I think that's totally cool you do not need to have an altar and you do not need to have an altar of this magnitude or any other magnitude um, you can totally work with what you have I have another sacred space in the living room which I actually share with my boyfriend um, and we have images of his patron and my matron um, together kind of on, on different sides of the same space with uh, candles and, and incense burner and stuff like that. So that's another place where I can do reflections in the morning and I can do meditations in the morning and stuff. Um, so, you know, it just you got to work with what you can work with. And if you are not able at the present time to express yourself and to express your sense of who you are as a witch by having an altar, then that really doesn't matter. You know, there is some way that you can express express yourself you can have a book which is yours and which contains you know the way that you feel and the, the aesthetics that you want to bring to the practice that you're doing or you can have like a small shrine or reflection space which may not be overtly witchy in nature if you want to see it that way but it can be a place for you to sit and a place for you to reflect even if you've got to be on the down low like even if you've got to be stealth about your witchy practice I like the fact that I can just sit at this side of the altar and not involve the rest of the altar at all if I'm just doing a devotional to hell I like the fact that I can equally likewise just sit on the other side as well um, I do tend to do more reflection and journeying and things like that on this side and I do more obviously reflection journeying communion devotion reverence that kind of thing on this side the middle of my altar is more where I will actually do workings and that's why it's a lot clearer and that's why there is even space left over to do workings um, that's the place where things get technical although I do also do workings on the floor so I'll have the altar all lit up like a Christmas tree and everything how I want it and then I will move stuff onto the floor and I'll do workings on the floor as well um, but the reason that the front of my altar is generally more kind of free like at the moment I've only got the oil burner and the poppet there is because I will change things up there that's the working area of the altar and if I do fire magic or release magic or I want to create an incense blend or anything like that then I can bring the cauldron forward or if I want to do scrying I can bring the crystal ball forward you know whatever I'm doing I can work on it in the middle so it makes a good practical kind of working area for me if that makes sense. I hope that this was at least interesting if you are one of those people who is voyeuristic about witchy spaces and yeah much love until next time guys. Blessed be.